So I've been studying about the nervous system for around two to two and a half years now. Um, first with a therapist that was working with my nervous system and I call her my nervous system whisperer because I never even thought about my nervous system until I started working with her. And then with my youngest um, as a way to help him process the trauma of cancer in his body and then um, becoming trained myself in using sound healing to help, or you would just say, I guess, using sound to help with the healing of trauma in the nervous system. So I know that this, this is like big stuff. I'm gonna try to be as simple as possible in my explanation of this. Um, I'm looking at my computer screen because I've got that graph in there, you know, the window of tolerance, polyvagal theory that it says. Um, and you probably hear me refer to this throughout our semester together, but basically there are, you may have heard of fight or flight before. And if you look at this graphic, the orange is fight or flight. And then the blue is freeze. You can imagine it like ice and then green is like where you can grow. And that's in the middle. That's your window of tolerance. So when I started working with my nervous system whisperer, she was like, Trinity, you have fight or flight happening and freeze at the same time. So you have, you have almost no window of tolerance. So as something happens to you, it triggers you and your nervous system freaks out and you don't have capacity to tolerate your reality. So what we're gonna do is work with this middle space, that green space, and, and help it grow so that you might be able to tolerate your reality before you flip out. And tolerate your reality literally could just look like the ability to have a one second pause and a breath before you react. That's huge growth. And I have to say, this time of our lives is like, we're all in low grade trauma, if not acute trauma all the time. Because what a pandemic does is makes you feel unsafe all the time. And when your body feels unsafe, you go, you've probably heard about lizard brain, you go into your lizard brain and and your body says, even though this isn't true anymore, your body remembers like, oh yeah, unsafe means there's a bear and the bear is chasing me and it's going to kill me. And so I have to either fight the bear, I have to run from the bear, or I have to go dormant, which is freeze. You almost think of it like a possum. You just possum, you just like shut down. You disassociate, that's freeze, right? So being uncomfortable translates to the body as a direct threat to safety. And we are pretty much uncomfortable all the time right now, right? I know there's a spectrum that some of us are dealing with acute trauma, like I said um, before, like for my family, we've had cancer on top of COVID. And so there's been this long state of what we would call hypervigilant. Hypervigilant means that you are like always doing this, like what's happening next, what's happening next, right? And be like, you know, someone drops a book and you're like, <gasps> right? You have this freak out response instantly. Well, what this is talking about in the graph, and we, and we will work with this throughout the year, um, is helping that space grow. And the mindful minutes are a huge tool to help with this so that you might be able to pause before you react. And the interesting thing and why this matters and why I'm putting this in our course, if you notice where I put the arrows on this graphic, no new learning can take place when you are either in hyper arousal, which is the fight flight, you know, which looks pretty agitated, or when you're in hypo arousal, which is that state of like numbness and disassociation. So in either of these places, your body is, is going, I have to survive. I don't have time to learn new information. I don't have time to listen to you. I'm gonna make sure I don't get eaten by the bear, right? So I think I'm gonna stop there because it's a lot to take in if you've never thought about this before. You know, I started 
being aware of this when I was like 37, 38, and it completely changed my life. Um, and you may, you may not, you know, this tool may be something where you're like, this doesn't, I don't care, this doesn't serve me. But maybe five or ten years down the road, you come back to this and find that it really helps you. Um, but I'll, I'm going to end with this little uh, anecdote, like a story yeah. that might help. So one of the books that's helped define all this work about nervous system is called Waking the Tiger. And in it, the author, Peter Levine, gives this example of like an impala running from a lion and how in that second, so the, the impala is in flight from a direct threat, right? And in the second before the lion attacks the impala, it goes into like a, a freeze, kind of the system's shut down to help it not feel the pain so much and then let's say for some reason like the lion trips or something else happens and somehow the lion doesn't attack attack the impala and it keeps running and it moves the trauma through its system and is able to process it this is something humans need practice on how to do because what we do is we hold the trauma in our bodies and it compounds layer upon layer upon layer so that like I said you, you know you get to the point where a book drops and it feels like um it feels like a gunshot it feels like something huge has happened because it's tapping into all the layers of painful things that you hold inside of you now if you've ever um, had a dog they're the best ones I think to watch this with. But if you've watched your dog sleep, you notice how it shakes, how it's like, ooh, ooh, and like does it twitches and things like that. That's actually the dog, like the Impala, moving the day's trauma through its system. And I think, um, and the research shows this, that's why like dogs are able to be so present and they're so in the moment and they're so happy. It's because they're not carrying layer upon layer of trauma in their body. They move it through the system. So what tools to create the internal container can do for you, like a mindful minute, is it starts to help you be able to move things through your system instead of all of it clenching, right, and holding and hurting you so that frankly you end up dragging so much stuff around with you that it's almost impossible to be present to your own life because you're dealing with, remember, like the sandwich of trauma, fight, flight, and freeze all at the same time. Um, so what we're going to do with different tools is help this space grow so that you have a little more capacity to tolerate your reality and also to be able to stay present to your life and to learn.